Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I hope you're having a wonderful week, a nice weekend. I hope you're just like cozying in and maybe it's snowing where you are. We've been getting some snow actually after the really wild um, rain and stuff we've had recently. In fact, last weekend, my husband and I went out to Belfast to have lunch and um, I thought, oh, it will be really cool to stop by the uh, the beach, go to uh, Sandy Point and see if the high tides and the storms had washed up any like cool beach glass. It was so cold. It was such a sunny, nice day. I'm like, it must be, oh my word, it was so cold. Like the wind just cut right through you. But I did find like a really big, like piece of a Coke bottle and something that looked kind of like a, a tail light that might've been on a boat. It was kind of like clear with like a frosted pattern on it, like a texture on it. Um, it was very, it was very cool. I was very, uh, I don't know, it was neat to find it, but then again, it's also like, this is like not even beach glass yet, it's so sharp. So we picked it up and, and discarded it because I didn't want anyone to get cut on it. A lot of dogs run on that beach, but I thought it'd be cool if we found some beach glass, but I definitely could not withstand much of the ocean wind uh, to look for it anymore. Oh, speaking of cool stuff, I just posted a tutorial on this. I was experimenting on ways to protect oil pastel paint. Look at this. I mean. I can like rub my hands. There's no stickiness on this at all. It's got a really nice, nice coating on it. Um, so I, I've been experimenting, and I'm pretty pleased with this, this, uh, this method. You can check it out on my channel. Um, I'm gonna hang this up in my kitchen and see how it withstands. So that way, if like. I mean, assuming YouTube's around for a long time, five years from now, somebody could say, hey, how's that paint oil pastel holding up that you varnished and I can, you know, kind of keep updating. But I honestly don't think there's gonna be an issue with that because the oil pastel's on a, it's a wooden cradle panel. And um, so there shouldn't be any shifting that would make oil pastel flex because oil pastel never really dries. It's uh, made with wax and oil, but it's a non-drying oil. Unlike say oil sticks, or like paint sticks, like Shiva paint sticks, or um, any brand's oil sticks, which are actually have linseed oil in it. So you have to like peel the skin off the top and then you can draw and paint with it. And then it will eventually oxidize and dry. Oil pastels don't, they can dry out a little bit, but they're still gonna be smudgeable. Um, so this, I think this technique is, is gonna work really well. And I don't see, I didn't get any, um, any skipping or bubbling or blistering or anything. I, th I think we're gonna be good with that. This here is going to be, it's what I'm working on for Critique Club. It's not done yet. I'm hoping to uh, work a little bit later tonight and finish it up, but it's Pan Pastel and Color Pencil. Because I was talking about using my favorites this year, I'm like, Pan Pastels, I just love those. They're so fun. I just really feel, um, I don't know, satisfied to paint with them. They always just, they're just, they just perform the way I want. Uh, and this is on pastel matte paper. And then I use Derwent Light Fast Pencils. And I'm enjoying the process. Although I forgot that um, pastel, I like pastel matte for pastels, but, and, and because I was using pan pastels and using uh, the sponge tools, I was kind of afraid that sanded paper might shred them a bit because generally I just working wise, I prefer to work on either a surface that I have used clear gesso on to get that sandy surface, Liquitex clear gesso, um, or like a UART sanded paper. I like both of those, but I didn't want to destroy my, uh, my sponges. And also I forgot how slow color pencils are on pastel matte pa paper. And this is just one of those things where um, pastel matte is, I love it for pastels. A lot of people love it for colored pencils, but I don't love it for colored pencils. I like looking at artwork I've done on it with colored pencils, because I forget how many layers it takes to get rid of the grain and everything. But that's kind of going to segue into our next topic is that everybody is different, right? Everybody has their own opinions, their own ways of perceiving the world, especially in art supplies. And so if you want to avoid drama, I would recommend that you just skip ahead about a few minutes. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, really get into it too much here, but I am gonna discuss uh, a turn of events that happened on, um, that happened on Monday. I posted a review. It was a positive review uh, about a line of products that were sent to me from a, another YouTuber here. And I, I reviewed the products, I posted it, and went about my way. I didn't even I didn't even look at the comments for a few hours because I schedule my posts to land at a certain time. Um, my art tutorials, reviews, and stuff are all at noon on weekdays, and then like sat chat at 7 a.m. on Saturday. So the only the only comments I usually jump in on 
right away is sat chat. Or if it's something that I think will be controversial, then I'll jump in on it. But I had no thoughts whatsoever that this would be controversial. It's a mostly positive review of some art supplies. <laughs> so imagine my surprise when I opened up my uh, YouTube studio app to read the comments and I was being called mean, jealous, snarky, a liar, an anti-Christian. Oh, and erratic. Uh, it was, it was surreal. I'm like, what are people so upset about? Um, so apparently fans of this other YouTuber whose products I reviewed uh, were very displeased that it wasn't every single aspect of every single thing being 100% glowing. So what I, all of this to say is that if you, if you like reviews, watch the review. I stand behind everything I said in that re review 100%. I clarified anything that was being misconstrued in a pinned post under the review if you want more information. Um, I do apologize for missing any questions that may have been posted as replies to other people's comments because I only get notified when it's a it's a it's a reply to my comment. For some reason, I wasn't seeing replies to other people's comments. Um, I haven't deleted anybody's responses. I even checked my held for review uh, folder because someone was accusing me of deleting comments. But if a person who posts a comment deletes their comment, it's going to delete everything underneath it. So I just want to put that out there. Um, but anyway, I was just uh, I was just shocked at what took place on my channel in the comment section on Monday. Um, I guess what happened, and this isn't typical behavior of my community, so this is what's so baffling. And that video wasn't really up long enough to be found organically by other people. And even if it was, it's not like a, it wasn't a salty or, or spicy take on anything. I just had, um, I just had a, a little criticism on the marketing claims of one of the products. It's not that big of a deal. I criticize stuff like this all the time. Watch any of my other videos if you think I'm being too harsh. I thought I was very delicate and gentle and kind in that video. But um, but anyways, the, the person whose products I reviewed has no problem with the review, she's told me. Um, but she did encourage her, she, she was a little upset or maybe just a little disappointed in the review and she um, encouraged her fans to come check out my channel and come check out my review. And she said to be kind in the comments. Um, but that that had the opposite effect and it was just a madhouse so uh my apologies to anyone seeing that drama and having to read some of those nasty things um yeah i just avoid the comments if you want to see the, the review and you don't want to be exposed to that i completely understand but i also feel like i need to defend myself i did not lie in that video i've been accused of taking bribes for other reviews, I'm like, have you watched any of my other reviews? Because I am real hard on those big companies. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I have been uh, I've been mulling this over in my mind all week about how how am I going to mention this in Sat Chat? It's been probably the biggest thing this week, the biggest, the the most time and attention stealing thing. And it, and it's it's all fine and well to say, well, just ignore it, just ignore it. Can't really ignore it this is this is my business I need to respond to these things because um, I mean I don't want it to just be a free-for-all madhouse uh, but then again if you delete comments in the middle of something like this then you are being accused of um, of manipulation and um, I'm not a manipulator you see what you get with me I am honest I'm earnest I was honest in that video I did not say anything untowards in that video and I stand by it so so that's that, and uh, I hope everybody is feeling calmer now and everybody can just enjoy some happy, happy art time and everyone puts their pitchforks away for goodness sake. My goodness, it's been such a, it's been such a week. I burnt my finger. Um, I was making some sourdough last weekend and I've gotten to this, this routine where I'm baking, on, I'm baking sourdough on the weekends. My starter is really strong and I keep it in the fridge, actually, I keep it in the fridge and then I take it out a couple hours before I want to bake and I find that it is perfectly ready to go. Like it floats in the water and everything. I don't need to feed it and then wait anymore. It's ready to go. Uh, the timing just seems to work out pretty well. But I think why it works out is because when I make sourdough, like I don't measure, I never measure anything for bread. I just kind of go by feel. So I have like this big mason jar and it's, it's about, it's probably got about eight ounces of starter. And maybe some of you guys are like, that's crazy. But, um, 
So what I do is I dump out almost all of it into the into the bread. I make a couple loaves at a time. So I dump almost everything out of it in the water after I test a little bit, make sure it's, it floats, because uh, then you can tell that it's ready to go. Um, I guess that means it's all kind of light and airy. So I I dump out almost everything. So I'm probably putting like six ounces of starter into my into my bowl for making sourdough, and maybe maybe it's more than what regular sourdough bakers bake. I don't know. I'm not a professional. I'm just doing this for fun. The bread is delicious. And so then I will take the jar that just has kind of like scrapings in there and I put it on my scale and I'll put in four ounces of flour and four ounces of water, stir it up, cap it up, stick it in the fridge. And that's enough food for that amount of starter because it's only like a, like a scrapings, maybe two ounces of, 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 mature starter in there when I do that, that seems to be enough to feed it all week and then when I go to, to bake the next weekend it's just ready to go. So um, it's made things so much simpler and I get delicious bread every weekend. So I think I found my groove as far as like a, a baking once a week because that's plenty for Jason and I to have two loaves of sourdough. Now I, I've gotten away from the kind of the fancy round artisanal loaves. I'm, I'm going to get bread pans because then you can actually slice it and make a sandwich with it if you want to. Um, but it comes out great and uh, it was really neat to actually share my starter with, with somebody from a party, um, from the cookie party a couple months ago. So it's just nice kind of knowing you got some some that's floating out in, around in the world. And uh, it's also a very calming practice. So if you're finding yourself really stressed out doing something like that is quite, uh, I think it's quite healing and quite quite calming. But anyway, so I burnt my finger. <laughs> I don't know if I told you that I shattered a Pyrex dish in the bottom of my car, the bottom of my, um, my oven. I had it with boiling water and it had almost gone dry and I went to pour some more boiling water in there and it completely shattered everywhere. This was a couple weeks ago. And so, um, I've been using a metal pan to put water in because you steam the sourdough. Um, anyway, so I had the metal pan of water on the bottom. I had, um, two, uh, two pans of sourdough baking and I had like this this uh, bigger metal pan on top because I don't have like a Dutch oven. I don't like specialty gadgets so I'm using like brownie pans or lasagna pans over my, my bread pans to kind of trap the heat and the steam and stuff. And what I forgot was that we threw our pot holders away. Uh, I think it was, I don't know, after Christmas or so because they were so burnt and stained and nasty. So we're like, oh, throw them away, we'll grab some next time we're in town. But you don't think about pot holders until you need to use pot holders. They never cross your mind. Pot holders never cross your mind until you're get ready to take something out of the oven. So, you know, we've been using a folded towel. I don't like that game. I don't think a folded towel is an ex is a is a proper uh, substitute for a pot holder. <laughs> it, I, 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 I was trying to get the pan off the top of the other loaves so it could bake the rest of the way and I burnt my finger and I'm doing, I'm filming my review, my uh, tutorial for that. I'm like, oh, my finger looks so gross. <laughs> I've got like a little, a little, like, I don't even know, a little sore on my finger. What a week, friends. It's been, uh, it's been rough. I, uh, sorry to, uh, have a beverage, but uh, man, my, my voice has been been busy. Oh, because I have totally been using it. I just did a really wonderful interview with Sarah Burns from Sarah Burns Studio and the Fearless Fearless Brush blog. Um, she's my first ever podcast interview, like one I've interviewed. I've never interviewed. Well, you know what? No, actually, I take that back. Back in like 2015 or so, I first started to try to do a podcast, and this was back before there were so many options. And I did an interview. I at least did one interview on that, but there were only like four episodes. I ran out of like hosting space and I wasn't ready to spend actual money to, uh, <laughs> to keep it up and going. So I kind of let that peter out. Um, but I've revamped, I, then I started a new one, like, I think it was like 2019, 2020, somewhere around there. And then, um, uh, then it went dormant for about a year <laughs> and now I'm back at it. I was, I'm on a streak. This is like three weeks in a row. So it's pretty good for me. Um, and so I interviewed her, we talked about plein air painting, we talked about uh, gouache, talked about all sorts of art stuff, um, and it was, it's fun. We talked for over an hour. So that should be up on my channel um, next Tuesday, and it should be on all your podcast apps. I, it's a video podcast, so I'm not exactly sure, how, at least it's recorded as a video podcast, who knows by the time I get everything together where I'll end up putting it, but um, as it stands now, it's a video podcast, and it should go out 
as a video podcast. I hope it doesn't mess up people listening on their podcast apps. I don't, uh, I don't know if you can turn the video off if you're listening on a podcast app. You know, my, my way to figure out stuff in tech is just to start pressing buttons and trying stuff and seeing what works. But the service I use was called Riverside FM and worked great for the interview. And, um, and plus it was just so awesome to hang out with another artist for like an hour and a half. Actually, we were chatting long after, so it's just kind of... It's just kind of nice to, uh, just, I don't know, just be with other like-minded people. Oh, and that brings me to a video that I saw by, uh, who is it? It was by Mina Lee, and she was talking about, like, the, I think that her, I can't remember what the video was called, it was just released, but the thumbnail said the friendless era, and they were talking about just how we have this, this lack of, um, third spaces to, like, meet people and you know you have your first space your home your second space is work and your third space would be like could be a library a cafe a bar like there's just so few spaces where you can just go and not have to spend a lot of money and and interact with people and meet people and um and it was just a really really well done video and I think trying to find more excuses to talk to people that are interesting and um uh, and talk about things that are interesting. I love to talk about ideas and to talk about um, art supplies and to talk about art techniques and talk about things that are people are excited about. One of the things I when I meet people, I ask them is, "Do you have any hobbies? What are you passionate about?" You know, I don't want just the "How's the weather where you live?" You know, I want to kind of get right into the meat of everything and find out what makes somebody excited. I think those conversations are a lot more fun, and you get to know somebody a lot quicker that way. And speaking of videos I watched and enjoyed over the last couple of weeks, I was going to talk about this last week, but I. Um, <sighs> I don't know what happened last week. <laughs> we had a sat chat. I have no idea, no idea what I talked about. Um, but I saw this video and it was How to Be a Renaissance Man. Like, it could be Renaissance Person, obviously. That was just the title of the video, probably because, you know, you think of a Renaissance ma man, somebody who's good at science and good at art and charming and, you know, just all of those things. Uh, you may think, like, obviously Leonardo da Vinci, but I would even think, like, Benjamin Franklin was kind of like a Renaissance man. But they were talking about the four hobbies you should have if you want to be a Renaissance man or woman, a Renaissance person. I don't know. Somebody's going to have a problem. <laughs> honest heart. Honest heart. I come, I, I come to you in all honesty and earnestness. If I say, if I say anything that is, that is problematic, I do apologize. Um, in advance. Uh, so the hobbies, you want to have a social hobby and that could be like, um, a knitting group or a running group or a cycling group or, um, maybe even like a class, maybe take a cooking class, something like that. So you've got something that you're doing with other people. Maybe it's roller skating every Sunday night or whatever, something you do with other people. Then you have a mental hobby. That's something that you do to challenge your mind. Maybe it's doing Sudoku. Maybe it is playing chess. Maybe it is uh, reading. And you'll see that a lot of these different hobbies can fall into a couple of categories, but I don't think you're supposed to double dip. I think you're supposed to have like one for each. If I'm, if I'm like getting the getting the gist of the video right. Uh, I was probably pretty groggy-eyed drinking my coffee first thing in the morning when I watched this, but I, it, it stuck with me. It stuck with me. I think it's a good idea. The next one is a um, physical hobby. So that would be, uh, that could be playing pickleball. That would be mine. I love to play pickleball. Um, it may be skiing. It may be running. Well, yeah, it could be any anything that you do to, it could be going to the gym, something you do frequently that you do intentionally that is physical. And then you have an artistic hobby, which could be painting or crafting or music or um, writing, anything like that that kind of uses the artistic side of us. And I just love that. That just is, seems so well-rounded and I think that's something that we should embrace. And you can also think outside of the box of what these different categories, these categories are broad and they can overlap. Like a lot of things could fall into several categories. But if you forced yourself to have four hobbies and gave yourself those criteria, I think we would make our lives all the richer for it. So if you have four hobbies like that, or if you have some hobbies that fall in those categories, please leave them in the comments below. And it would, it'll be really cool to see because maybe, um, 
Maybe it'll give us some ideas. Maybe you have the same hobbies as somebody else in this community and you guys would like to team up. Maybe you like to play chess and you want to do like join each other's computer chess.com people tribe. I don't know. My, my husband, my daughter does chess.com. But, uh, you know, maybe you could team up that way or, you know, just have that other connection and something that, you know, makes your day a little bit more magical, a little bit more special. I'm all for that. I'm all for I'm all for doing things that help us become better versions of ourselves. Because that's something I'll say here is that I'm always trying to be the best version of myself and um it saddens me deeply when I feel like I have let people down and when I feel like I have let myself down either by not communicating clearly to my um uh to my community ab about things. Uh I never want to you mislead anybody. My my aim is true, I should say. Um, so uh, speaking of growth, another analogy I heard that I thought was really neat. Boy, I guess I've watched a lot of self help videos in the last couple of weeks. This was um, this was from a video I saw by Hannah Louise Poston, but she does not uh, take credit for this analogy. She actually said it came from like Buddhism, maybe, and she had this analogy of you're climbing a mountain, and but you're climbing a mountain straight up from the bottom to the top straight up is too hard. That's not how we climb the mountain of life. We climb it, uh, we climb it by going around the mountain and we just get a little bit higher each time. But as you're going around the mountain, every once in a while you come across that same patch of terrain. And so say you're, you're going right, you're on that low rung, you're going around the mountain, everything's, everything's really hard and you, and you get all the way around and you come to that patch of trouble again and it's still hard, but it's not as hard because you're wiser and you're more experienced than the first time you cross that patch. So let's say you're a small business owner and it's like the first your first year as a small business owner and you've got tax time. You're like, oh, it's so overwhelming. I've got all these receipts. I got this, I got that. What can I write off? Who do I reach out to? Who can help me with this? You find your accountant, you, you know, it's hard. It's hard, you have a lot to do. And that's like, that's a real struggle. Then the next year, you know, you go, you're going around, you're climbing the mountain, you know, you're spiraling around, you hit that patch of, um, of terrain again. So you're like, oh, I have an accountant. I have all my stuff there. I just need to get it a little more organized and send it off a little easier this time. You go around the mountain, you hit that patch of terrain again. That's like, oh, I've, I've organized as I went through the year. This is easy. Here it goes, all my stuff to the accountant. You know, you, every, every rotation around the mountain, these challenges get a little bit easier because you have the experience and the, um, the knowledge you learned the last time around. And I think that's something that we could all take to heart because I think a lot of times we think of life getting harder as we get older and in some instances yeah absolutely we yeah <laughs> you know some things just get harder maybe we get a little more tired as each year goes by or have a little less energy or um you know maybe we have some health struggles that make just things that were simple for us in the past a little more challenging to do or a lot more challenging to do but a lot of our strength and fortitude comes from all of those struggles we've had in the past and um uh, dusting ourselves off, licking our wounds, and moving on to face our challenges again is how we grow. And I want you guys to know that you're pretty awesome. You've had some challenges. We all have challenges, and you're stronger for them. And it can be frustrating. We're like, I've had enough challenges here. Let's just have some smooth treading around that mountain, please. But that's not really how it goes all the time. And um, But it's... It, you get better. You get better as you go, and you get you you gain more. Uh, I think I'll wrap it up today with some basic housekeeping. Uh, we are getting towards the end of the month. Uh, by next that chat will be in February, if you can believe it. And uh, I have a couple specials running in my Teachable School. If you want to take advantage of them, my Critique Club archive for 2023. That would be all 24 tutorials posted in 2023. Uh, it's regular $60. This is a launch month of that archive, so you can get it for $30 if you purchase it by the end of the month. I will put the link and the coupon code uh, there, so you can get it for $30 if you wish. If you would like to purchase all past years of Critique Club in one, all the tutorials from the past five years of Critique Club in one bundle, you haven't bought any of the other ones in the past, you can also get 50% off that bundle. Now, if you bought the bundle in the past, like of the first four years, don't rebuy the bundle. You don't have to spend that much money. Just buy the one year and you'll have all the years. So that's why I do it that way. So then the latecomers can still get a deal on everything if they are new to the party. And then the people that have, um, that have purchased them in the past can just buy 
the last year if they want to do it. And if you're a member in Critique Club, of course, you do not need to buy these archives. The archives are there for folks that would prefer just to buy something one and done and have lifetime access without any future payments rather than somebody that wants to pay every month to access it while they want to access it. So it's just it's just meeting you where you are. Uh, the other thing that I have on special is the watercolor glass class and that is on sale to the end of the month with the coupon code PERFUME. But again, I will put the, the um, the discount link in the video description so you can click on that and check it out. Um, I also have a class coming up in the middle of February called Watercolor Playdate with Altenew and that is available for purchase. I know they have started to ship out the supply kits and I'll put a link to that in the video description if anybody's interested in that. Altenew is a rubber stamp and art supply company so it kind of fuses your crafting and painting. The, the Watercolor Playdate class is going to fuse um, uh, painting and card making. So so if you're kind of straddling both worlds or maybe you're, you're in one and you're interested in the other, it's a really great class to kind of stretch your supplies a bit and um, make some really fun projects and just kind of relax and have a good time. So um, I think that is about it. Obviously, I still have some spots left in my second week of the France retreat next year. I'll put a link to that as well. This is going to be a pretty full video description. Um, and that is just about it. I'm going to look at my list. I actually have two minutes left. I can't believe it. Uh, uh, like I mentioned before, trying to, uh, I mentioned the very unfortunate lipstick incident, I think. I don't know. I've, I've recorded so many times because uh, yeah, I'm choosing my words very wisely this this week because there's been so much misunderstanding um, here, and uh, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for stoking the fire, fanning the flames, or misunderstanding. What you see is what you get here. I don't know. Um, let's see. Gosh, did I did I talk to? I talked to, I think I talked about most everything, even right down to the burn on my finger. I burned my hands off, friends! OG Frugal Crafter friends know all about don't burn your hands off. I burned my hands off because I didn't have a pot holder. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, what are you working on? I want to know. I want to know mainly because I find that winter can just be kind of draining. So hearing people talk about the things they're excited about and projects they're excited about and ideas they want to try, uh, supplies they want to use, I find that to be extremely motivating and exciting. And uh, yeah, just just keep it keep it keep it friendly and positive in the comments. Pretend your grandmother is reading them, and don't post anything you want your grandmother to read. Don't post anything you want, want published on the front page of the newspaper. My mother used to say. Uh, so there, I, I I think you guys are good. You guys are all right. <laughs> you can behave yourselves. I'm sure. Oh, but anyway, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna get cracking on that a little bit, see how much voice I have left in me today, and yeah, I am so happy with how this came out. No smudging whatsoever. I think this could be quite, I think this could be quite the game changer. Now I'm just gonna make sure I don't go buy a bunch of wooden panels, because I had a great idea. I've got three more wooden panels. I don't need to go. That's my thing. That's what I do. I'm like, oh, this is great. I got to buy so many that I'll never run out in a lifetime. No, use what you have, Lindsay. Use what you have. It's a battle, isn't it? Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye!